this second session of look at the book on verse 7 of First Peter, focusing on husbands. We saw the wives being addressed in verses 1 through 6, and now the husbands are addressed here in verse 7. We notice that they, the husbands are called to live with their wives in an understanding way, that is, according to knowledge. And now with that knowledge in view that we're going to try to understand, we're going to see how honoring wives expresses itself toward her as the weaker vessel and as a fellow heir with us of the grace of life. Father, come. These are delicate and wonderfully sensitive and beautiful dynamics in a good marriage, and I pray that you would show us your will for what good and beautiful marriages look like in how husbands treat their wives here. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, according to knowledge, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. So the main thing this time I want us to see is that the primary command is that husbands honor their wives, and that honor is shaped by the knowledge of her as a weaker vessel and the knowledge of her as a fellow heir of the grace of life, which means honor, the way we show honor to our wives is shaped by knowledge of her weakness and knowledge of her glory. And those are going to affect each other. If you go in one direction here too far and try to treat the woman as a weaker vessel in a way that's demeaning, this is going to check you and cut you off. And yet if you try to say we're fellow heirs of the grace of life with no differences, this is going to check us and bring us into balance. So this time I think all we'll have to look at, all, the, all, the, all we'll have time to look at is how is our honoring of our wives shaped by the fact that she is the weaker vessel. What does that mean? Let's just take first the idea of vessel. Why is she called a vessel? Well, first of all, notice that she's the weaker vessel, which means men and women are vessels. So she's a vessel and we're a vessel and she's called the weaker vessel. Now, what is vessel referring to for a man and a woman? Well, you might say, well, it's referring to the sexual anatomy because sometimes vessel is used that way in the Bible. I doubt that very much because I don't think referring to a woman's uh, female anatomy sexually and calling it weaker really has any bearing on how we relate to one another in the bigger, wider picture. I think the focus here is not on our sexual anatomy, but on our bodies per se, because, for example, here in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, Paul says, we have this treasure, that is the gospel and faith, in vessels of clay, that is, our bodies that are wasting away and are weak. Vessels of clay, fragile vessels, men and women, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. And Peter picks that up in chapter 4, verse 11, where he talks about us acting and serving in the power that God supplies, not in our own power. So our bodies and the way we use them in the world should be animated by the power that belongs to God so that he gets the glory in what we do through our bodies. So back here, I think he is simply saying, in general, the woman has the weaker 
body, which, of course, in a pre-industrial, pre-mechanized agrarian society would have a more immediate and obvious relevance than it may today, but it is, is still relevant today. For example, if you just take the Olympics, for example, I don't think there is a single sport in the Olympics, uh, I could be wrong about this, I've tried to think of one, that has men and women competing with each other. It's all men versus men and women versus women. Or what about the NFL? There's a, uh, no, not NFL, this is uh, uh, the NBA. <laughs> I don't think there's any women's National Football League. But in the NBA, there's a, a men's NBA and a women's NBA. National uh, Basketball Association, or the PGA, the Professional Golfers Association. There's a women's and there's a men, or there's um, tennis. There's professional women's tennis and professional men's tennis. They don't ever compete with each other here. And, and if you go beyond sports, about uh, 3% of construction workers are women in America, and about 13% of police are women, and about 15% of military, military are women. All of, all of that forces us to ask the question, well, what, what's going on here? Why do we tolerate that kind of discrimination to force there to be uh, separate games in the Olympics and separate NBA, separate PGA, separate tennis. And it's because almost everybody would say men have a genetic advantage. They have this thing called the Y chromosome. So women XX, men XY, and it produces a kind of strength and stamina, generally speaking. I say generally speaking because I know any of the women who play any of these sports right here would be better than me in all of them. They'd be stronger, faster, more durable, more competent. And so we're, we're talking in generalities here, not just one to one. And the generality is that today and yesterday, everybody recognizes that there is a remarkable and profound weaker vessel dimension to the way God has set us up. God has ordained that in general men have the stronger vessel and women have the weaker vessel here. And the point is then to ask, okay, given that reality, when we honor our wives, when we honor them, and it is shaped by this. What is this? Well, what's that going to do? Well, honor means esteem and, and show worth and praise. And how does that work itself out here? And I think it would work itself out in terms of protection, in terms of uh, provision, in terms of leadership, or initiative. And I say that not only because in the nature of the case, men want to honor the weaker vessel by protecting her and providing for her and, and giving whatever initiatives would be helpful to her, but it says here in Ephesians 5, when Paul is describing how husbands and wives relate, he says, husbands, you are the head of the wife, which would imply leadership or initiatives as Christ is the head of the church his body and his self himself is its savior and that would imply protection and provision husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her this is not about power this is about service of her that he might sanctify her he's taking initiatives as the head to make her as holy and as beautiful as she can be, having cleansed her by the washing of the water and the word. In the same way, husbands, love your wives as 
as your own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. So there's there's provision, nourishing and cherishing, and there's leadership, and there's protection, which is what a Savior does. All of this modeling of Christ and his church support the idea back here that the honoring of the wife shaped by her being a weaker vessel is going to take the form of protection and provision and leadership and initiative and and other ways. There will be a general demeanor by which his very manhood moves him to honor her in a way that is shaped by this particular reality. Now, next time we draw this one in, he must honor her not only as weaker vessel, but as a fellow heir with him of the grace of life, which means this is her glory, and that honoring her glory is going to have a profound effect on the way he honors her weakness. I hope you'll tune back in to see what that is.